Afternoon folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. What we're going to do today is we're going to cook ourselves a Cornish hen casserole in this aluminum Dutch oven using our modified fire irons as a trivet. So, pretty simple stuff. We've got a Cornish hen, we have four cheese rice, we have an open package of potatoes, we have some dried soup greens, a bag of red potatoes, and some Old Bay seasoning. So, first things first, we're going to put a little bit of water in our Dutch oven. And we're going to throw some soup greens in there. And set that aside. Then we're going to come in here and put about, yeah, I don't know, many potatoes as we care to look at in there. And we're going to quarter them up. All right, so we pretty much covered the bottom of the pot with potatoes, and now we're going to take the rice. And we're going to put it in there as well, just like this. Spread it out over the top, just like this. Just kind of make ourselves a little platter right there in the middle. All right, so the next step in the puzzle here is to get our bird, check the inside, make sure they didn't stick the entrails inside there because sometimes they tend to do that. We're going to come through here and we're going to cut him right down the back. Just like this. Just like that. And open him up. Just like this. And we're going to spread that right on top. Just like this. Okay, tuck those wings off to the side a little bit, and then come in here and season it real well, just like this. A little bit of Old Bay, <laughs> a little bit of Old Bay. Now, once we get a bed of coals, we're ready to cook. Now about every 15 minutes you're going to want to turn this thing so that you get even cooking. And I just use an old fire poker for that most of the time that I forge on the forge. Pick up the pot, move it a quarter of a turn, set it down, and then take your lid and spin that a quarter of a turn. Wait 15 minutes. Now a lot of guys will tell you that you got to have big chunks of hardwood coals for Dutch oven cooking. And I say baloney on that. I cook lots of food. And I cook lots of food with small sticks. And when I say small, I'm not talking about pencil size, although I do use pencil size sticks. But I'm talking about sticks not much bigger than my thumb as fuel. And I keep a little pile of them off to the side. You can see them over there burning right off on the side of the fire there and those are the coals that I'll use to push underneath that Dutch oven when the stuff that's under there goes out and I don't really want a bunch of flame under there but little bitty flames coming up aren't hurting anything I don't want a big roaring fire under there but I've got it covered I've got the wind blocked a little bit on two sides so I'm controlling the burn of those smaller pieces of fuel and it's a whole lot easier to find a lot of small sticks than it is to cut up a bunch of wood and build a big fire and wait for it to burn down. All right, so it's been about another 15 minutes. <clears throat> we need to go ahead and turn this dude. Just make sure you pick it up in the center. Pretty easy. Turn your lid. Should be good.
to this point. I probably won't add any more wood to the side to get any more coals. I think I got plenty now. About another 20 minutes. We'll check our temperature and see where we're at. Okay, I've knocked the ashes off the lid here and the coal so we can kind of look and see what we got going on here. And again, you know, this uh, fire poker works pretty good for me. Oh man, will you look at that? Golly. All right, let's check our temperature. The best way to do that is to put your thermometer in the thickest part of a thigh and see what you get. I got that black thing set right where we need to be. So we're at about 165. Really, we're actually done right now. All right, so we're good to go. Let me check the other thigh just to make sure. Stick it in this one in the thick part here. See what we got. Okay, both of these things are done for sure. Now we know we're good and safe. Let's get this thing off the fire and stir it up and see what we got. Okay, so here's one big advantage to this thing I see already. This thing hasn't been off the fire for five minutes and I can already comfortably touch it. Man, does that thing look good. Got a little bit of skin stuck to our lid right there. Not a big deal. We'll set that upside down off to the side. Now, anybody tells you you can't cook in an aluminum Dutch oven, man, oh man, they don't know what they're talking about. I mean, look at that thing. There ain't nothing burnt to the bottom of that pan at all. Everything is done perfectly. That is wonderful. My gosh. Look at that thigh just falling off of there, man. Look at that thing, golly. Rip this one for me and one for you, buddy. Okay. You gotta let yours cool down and I gotta strip it. So just hang tight. Well, Rufus didn't waste no time waiting on the camera. His bowl's completely empty here. And I haven't even had a chance to hardly get any of mine yet. Man, oh man, look at that. That is just great. All right, all right. Oh man, Rufus. Holy cow. That is just perfect. Man. What them brothers good? Huh? Are them potatoes good or what? It's actually good. Mm, 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 mm. Folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Pathfinder School and Self-Reliance Outfitters. I appreciate you joining me here for another quick video today in our camp cooking series on making a Cornish hen casserole in an aluminum Dutch oven. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our business, for our family, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And Rufus and I will be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.